Hey everyone, we're doing some Valor Ridge, and the purpose of the video that we're going to do today is we're going to use nature as a teaching tool and to use it as a metaphor and a allegory to what's really happening in our country today. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, as you guys can probably see behind me right here, normally you can see 14, you know, 12, 13, 14 miles away. You can see the Cumberland Mountains right behind us. In fact, on our logo, uh, that's the mountain range that is uh, behind me. And oddly enough, before I ever even had this view, we cut down, JJ and I cut down all these trees about uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, we didn't know that that's what it looked like. So I made the logo first. And then as soon as we cut down those trees, that's exactly what it is. It's four mountain peaks exactly right there on our logo. So I guess that's... Uh, sign that we're supposed to be here doing what we're doing, but today is a little bit hazy, a little bit murky. If you can uh, see behind me, there's a lot of mist, and you know we're in the Cumberland Mountains. I know the Smoky Mountains are a little bit further away from us, but you can see that there is quite a mist there. You know you can't really see as clearly as you could on a normal day, and I think that that's a pretty good allegory to towards what's going on in our country and our society today. There's a lot of murkiness, intentionally so, a lot of murkiness that, that's out there. And one thing I really want to talk about is like what actually freedom means uh, to real Americans, what freedom actually means and what that actually is. And I think, you know, it's, it's not a generational thing because certainly there's people in, in my generation, Generation X, and, and the ones that are a little bit older than me, like your baby boomers, and even, you know, my, uh, you know, and my grandparents when I was younger, when they were alive, you know, that greatest generation as well. Uh, it's not necessarily a generational thing when it comes to freedom because people forget, you know, the members of the greatest generation also voted uh, for, for the New Deal, you know, with Franklin Roosevelt, uh, you know, in expanding government power. They also, you know, that same generation voted for the National Firearms Act in 1934. Uh, so, you know, it, I think people in every generation have an idea that they want sometimes security over freedom. And, you know, Benjamin Franklin, you guys have heard the quote, uh, he that would give up his freedom for security will soon lose both. Uh, I think there's a lot of validity to that. And you, we're going to really emphasize in this video, uh, not just for, for the younger folks, but, but people that are a little bit younger than me, uh, the guys my age, and even people older. Uh, you know, we're always going to get sold a false bill of goods, intentionally misty, intentionally murky, uh, things that want to muddle the waters. And there, and there are people in charge, you know, uh, leaders in Congress or, or in the executive branch of government, they'll, they'll always intentionally try to, you know, give you the lie that you can, um, you can give up, you know, a little bit of your freedom and, and we'll make you more safe. You know, that, that was the case. Uh, certainly many, many decades ago. It continues on today. Uh, you know, examples in our lifetime, probably the greatest infringement on, on individual liberty, the Patriot Act. You know, the old Bush administration, old Dick Cheney and uh, Alberto Gonzalez and all those other, uh, you know, neocons out there. And of course, the entire Democrat Party nearly uh, voted for it. But so did a lot of the Republicans as well. So they sold us this idea. Oh, yeah, just let us let us spy on you. And you know, let us let us keep you safe at the airport. And you'll be more free, and and people willingly did it. Now, I remember a long time ago, there's one of these guys that that saw it for what it was was a power grab. And when one administration does it, it's okay, right? It's okay when one administration does it. But God forbid the political opposition gets a hold of it and use it against you. Then it's tyrannical, right? Well, the problem is, is that nobody wins in that zero sum game. And we can think about examples uh, in the last couple of years, people willingly given up uh, individual freedom in order to feel safe. You know, we can, we can look at the modern gun control movement. Uh, if you just give up your firearms, or at least certain types of firearms, uh, then, you, then society will be safer. Nobody will get hurt. Uh, you know, which is a, obviously anybody that, that has more than, you know, <laughs> an average sense of intelligence would understand just how wrong that, that sort of thinking is. Uh, think about the last three years. You know, uh, 2020 and, and moving forward, how much personal freedom a lot of people willingly uh, gave up in order to be safe and never get sick. And, of course, we see now the suicide rate is, is multiple times higher than what it was. Mental illness multiple times more than what it was. The economy and people's savings and, you know, learning in schools and, and all those other unintended consequences that happened because so many people lived in fear, right? Um, my belief on, on, on freedom and being an American is... 
You don't yield one inch uh, when people want to try to convince you to give up your freedom, to give up your liberty. You, you don't yield one inch because there's never going to be an entirely safe society. I mean, maximum security prisons are on lockdown. These people are a lot of times 24 hours a day locked in their cell or 23 hours a day, and then they get one hour of, of, of you know recreational time. People still kill each other in maximum security prisons. And, and I think that's the society I think many people, uh, whether you're on the rabid left or whether you're some neocon, uh, I think that's the kind of the society that they're trying to push us towards is, is, is giving, up, giving up freedom in order to feel safe. Well, unfortunately, this, this ruse is so obviously uh, deficient that if you're one of these people that really believes that, man, you know, you should probably turn in your American card. Uh, maybe move to like, uh, hell, I don't know, maybe China or, you know, maybe move somewhere in the Middle East somewhere. Or, you know, maybe move to one of those European countries that locked their, their society down and took away all their firearms and all that stuff. Maybe that's where you need to go. But for, for real Americans, I'm looking at it like this. Uh, we, we are people that are endowed by our creator with inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, right to life, uh, right to protect it, uh, right to liberty, right to live your life free of impingement of uh, infringement from government, and of course pursuit of happiness, the right to acquire, attain, improve property. And that's not just physical land. That's not just your house. It's not just money. You know, it's it, 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 your property is anything that you own, right? Whether that's intellectual, whether that's physical, whether that's specie or currency. You know, that is, could also be included in, in that. So, I think the murkiness comes from ignorance a, a lot of times or naive. Uh, you know, and many times with the younger people, it truly is ignorance. And I don't mean that uh, negatively. I don't mean that a personal attack on anybody. I, I just think it's ignorance because, you know, the public school system, I was a public school teacher for three years. I understand the whole game there. But like, the thing is, is that it's intentional ignorance and dumbing down the curriculum. And, and really, uh, you know, we look at the problems from public school and young kids coming up, they don't even know what the American system of government is. You ask a hundred of them what system of government in the United States, oh, democracy. You ask her, democracy. And it's like, no, we're a constitutional republic. And there's guys out there that are saying that that's a cliched, tired argument. Well, sorry, speaking the truth is never tired and cliched to me. Uh, I think the reason why we're in this uh, conundrum is because people have not spoken the truth. Uh, you know, if you guys are getting your information from the mainstream news, like you're definitely getting propaganda. You're definitely getting proselytized. So it's time for reality check in many ways. When it comes to the naivety, when it comes to people being naive, oh, if I just give up this right, or if I just give up this freedom, then it will, well, just for a little while, then everything will go back to normal. I'm sorry, but normal is freedom, okay? The American normalcy is freedom. That is the condition and the purpose of this nation. And we're at a point in time now where people think that the role of government is to like infringe people's rights, to use the government at the, at the local, state, or federal level to roll people over and intimidate them and threaten them. I mean, look at what the FBI has been caught doing. Look at what the ATF does. You know, look at what so many of these agencies wrongfully, illegally, immorally do. And I'll submit something to you guys. You know, if, if these leaders intentionally and knowingly twist, bend, and violate the Constitution and then expect us to follow their laws, no, no, no. We, we absolutely need to disobey their laws because they're in violation of the United States Constitution. I look, look, look no further back uh, for, for the justification from this. Look no further back than Martin Luther King himself who said, one has a legal and moral obligation to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral obligation to disobey unjust laws. And of course, he states an unjust law is something that doesn't elevate humanity, but brings it down. So government control, intimidation, unlawful search and seizure, restriction of free speech, restriction of one's right to protect themselves and their family. Those don't elevate humanity. Those bring humanity down to its basis level. That's when we start getting into the totalitarian government area. And totalitarian governments are not elevating of humanity. We look at the 20th century regimes, uh, you know, such as, you know, the Soviet Union, regimes such as Nazi Germany, regimes uh, like in Latin America and many other places in the Middle East and in Africa. We look at those kind of regimes and it's like they, that's not a place you'd want to go on vacation with your family. Right. In, in modern times, of course, it's China. Of course, they'll they'll get upset on, uh, you know, social media for criticizing dear leader uh, in the Chinese government. But that's a very repressive and, and morally reprehensible place. Um, you know, I grew up in the Cold War. 
And I always remember, you know, the adults that actually taught in school, where we actually were taught things. And I remember these adults always saying, be glad that you live in the United States where your government doesn't spy on you. Be glad you live in the United States where you have free speech. Be glad you live in the United States where you can defend yourself and your family. You know, be glad you live in the United States where we have a free press. And of course, literally a generation later, 30 years since since the fall of 30 plus years since the fall of the Soviet Union the iron curtain coming down we have an entire generation of people that don't even know how morally repugnant socialism and communism were and then they're going to try to articulate and argue why that needs to be brought about here but see, that's where the naivety comes in. That, that's where the ignorance comes in because they weren't alive during those times. They weren't, they, they, they're not taught in school how morally repugnant that that system of government is. You know, I, I, I'm, it's easy to pa put blame on, on other people. It's easy to put blame on that. But if you're a, a parent that has a child and you're not asking what are they learning in school or if you had a family function and you got your, you know, your, 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 obligatory leftist spewing all the MSNBC to, uh, MSNBC talking points and then you say oh I'm just gonna remain quiet out of politeness y you can't expect that kind of stuff to stop but I for one uh, am, am principles and morality over any individual relationship in my life okay uh, I have great family great friends lifelong friends uh, great people out there that that help us out great people out there that support us and uh, great people out there that have helped along the way in life uh, but when they, they start with, with ideas out there that are just anti-american or and that's another word that used to be very anti-american and I think what's the most anti-american thing in the world is expanding government and limiting individual freedom that is the most anti-american thing that there is so don't let people murky you, murky or muddy the waters. Don't let them bring about this uh, postmodernist truth. Oh, there are no absolute truths. <laughs> like, then why should I listen to that statement, right? And in graduate school, we had to take postmodernist philosophy. And I just remember it was the biggest waste of money that I was required uh, to take those classes because there was, it was all kindergarten logic or preschool logic. I think, therefore I am, you know, that doesn't make it true. And so we've got to start being leaders out there and we've got to start passing these principles on to other people in our life, regardless of their age. I've talked to so many ignorant people in their 60s, 70s, you know, people that grew up as, as part of the baby boomer generation that they had a great, great life because of their parents and their grandparents, and the people that came before them. And they think somehow we just need to up in this country. Right? We need to up in this country and, and, and change it away. Fundamentally transform it, like, uh, like old Barack Hussein Obama said. So my point is, guys, is that you've got this whole package of freedom in America. There are people that are trying to change it. There are people out there going to try to convince you and sell you a false sale of goods. And that needs to be intellectually just curb stomped. Uh, that needs to be morally fought against in every capacity and that also needs to be passed on to the other generations of people about the principles of freedom, what this country actually is, uh, the many, 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 many overwhelmingly good points. Now I'm a person that thinks things through before doing a video on a topic. I don't emotionally react because fear is the greatest killer of sanity that there is. And I can't think of any other mechanism that's brought about some of these ridiculously stupid laws than fear, whether it's wine moms afraid for their children or uh, whether it's, you know, some uh, purple haired uh, freak show with fishing tackle all over their face that uh, that doesn't understand that you can't just pretend you're something and all of a sudden everybody has to accept you for that. That's how the world works. Um, you know, we're looking out here like this and I, I can't think of any other greater climate of fear. Uh, than people trying to convince you to give up your freedom versus uh, let's let's take a deep breath, think things through, and move forward and actually maintain what other people have fought for this country for and maintained it and sacrifice every day and continue to do so. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, follow me on social media. Links down below. And if you'd like to uh, come on out and, and exercise your Second Amendment and learn how to protect your God-given rights, learn how to protect your nation, learn how to protect your family, uh, come on out here at Battle Ridge and, and we can help you with whatever pistol, rifle, what you're into. We'll be able to help you learn how to do that. This is Reed Hendricks of Battle Ridge reminding you the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.